Hello, Arizona, and welcome to another edition of Full Court Press. I'm Chris Delgado. And I'm Brandon Mejia. And tonight it was Arizona State in town, the upstate rival against U of A. And so far at the beginning of the game, it started out somewhat of an Arizona blowout, 8-2, to two, because Arizona State wouldn't get on the board and Arizona fans couldn't sit down. I think it was half of the crowd cheering them along and making sure that offense wouldn't stop, and that's exactly what happened in the beginning. A lot of standing, a lot of standing for Arizona fans. As ASU couldn't get anything started in the first five minutes of the game. Yeah, and uh, you fast forward eight minutes to go and it's a tie game, 17 to 17 because of back-to-back -back three pointers for ASU. And you go a little bit further ahead in the game, three pointer by Gabe York, that puts it up 26 to 22. And then you go to Alonzo Trier, three pointer, 31, 22. And it was after that that Arizona was just going to halftime, feeling it. Going into halftime, 14 points up against ASU. You can't feel better than that. ASU knew they were going to have to come out and do something to, to, to contain Arizona's offense, but they couldn't. And that was the main problem for ASU's downfall against Arizona tonight. ASU coming out the second half, really struggling to stop Arizona's offense, and U of A was able to just put up the threes. Alonzo Trier, two minutes into the second half, followed by Gabe York's three, and then Kadeem Allen would make a difference. A seven-point run from Kadeem Allen which started with a three-pointer and double back-to-back -back layups. Gave them the 67-38 lead with 10 minutes left in the second quarter. But Tarzewski, the top of the night, an outstanding performance by Tarzewski on the defensive end, hitting a career high of 15 rebounds. This guy was playing like an NBA superstar. Well, it is 15 rebounds, career high, like you said, and four blocks, one huge one late, late in the second half. Um, and Sean Miller talked really highly about the senior. You know, I think Caleb came to realize at one point that there aren't as ma there aren't many seven footers that are intelligent on and off the court, incredibly competitive, tremendously gifted defensively, and rebound at the highest level. There aren't many of those walking around, and if, when you're one of them, a lot of good things will happen in your future. You know, sometimes as a big man, you can get worried about not getting the ball, not scoring enough. And, and uh, you know, really, um, you know, it's just uh, someone really, you know, told me one time, it's not about the, the numbers, it's about the, the letters. I Meaning, you know, it's not about the points and, and how many rebounds you get. It's about how many, you know, wins your team has. And, um, you know, I'm just trying to do whatever I can to, to help the team win. And Caleb's playing at such a high level and dominating on the inside. Um, so that's big for us, but at the same time, every day, um, every practice is very important for us to get better. Um, you know, we have to continue to keep moving and making progress forward in the right way. And, um, you know, we can't go in there and have a slack practice and just, you know, go in there and don't go hard and then, you know, revert back to bad habits. You know, it's important to keep sharp and uh, make sure we, we take care of everything we're supposed to do. And another player that had a huge day today who's playing out of his mind is Parker Jackson Cartwright, the point guard. And he has the ability to drive the lane, find his players out on the arc, or even dish it to his big men like Caleb and Ryan Anderson. And I think, you know, just watching him play and the size that he plays at lets him maneuver inside and get, get those baskets that, you know, a lot of players wouldn't be capable of doing. And Sean Miller, like he said in the press conference, you know, Jackson Cartwright is a player who has not missed a single practice, who's there for every single game. And when that you have a kind of player like that, I think you really notice the difference, especially on the court and in games like this against a rival team where you want to be playing at your best. And that's exactly what Cartwright was able to do. And he's giving it up for the short guys like me. Seven, seven assists, no turnovers. You gotta love it. An outstanding game, not only by the uh, starters here in Arizona, but also the bench putting up 38 points for Arizona. I think that makes a crucial difference in a rival game that you need to be coming out, you know, with the best of your best, and to be able to rely not only on your starters, but your bench as well, is why Arizona was so successful tonight. Well, and, and one other big thing that just sticks out on the stat sheet, 50 rebounds. 50 rebounds to ASU's 26, and it just, you're gonna, if you win that stat, you're more than likely you're gonna win the game. Want to keep getting better, and you want to keep improving, and especially on that side of the basketball defense. And I noticed that we have been getting better, not by leaps or bounds, but maybe tonight it showed up a little bit more. Now Arizona has a week off to rest those legs, get some practice time in before next Wednesday they go up to the Colorado and Utah schools for another road trip. Yep, and if you want to catch us back here, you can catch us March 3rd as they take on California State. 
tip-off is at 7. But from McHale, your final 99-61, to 61, Arizona over Arizona State. For Full Court Press, I'm Brandon Mejia. And I'm Chris Delgado. Good night, Arizona.